This is the first of three videos discussing section 4.2. In this video, I'm going to be talking about increasing and decreasing functions. So a function is increasing when higher values of x correspond to higher values of y. So the graph on the left here is an increasing function because when I plug in this lower value of x, I get this y value. I can maybe call that y1, which is just the same as f of x1. But when I plug in this higher value of x, I get a higher y value. We might call this y2, which could just be f of x2. And really, the whole way across, as my x values go up, my y values go up. So for this entire function, this function is an increasing function. Alternatively, a function is decreasing when higher values of, of x correspond to lower values of y. So in this case, when I plug in my initial value x1, I get this y1 value. But when I plug in this higher value of x, x2, I get a lower value of y, which I might call y2. And again, as I go from left to right across my function, my y values are going down the whole way. So we call that a decreasing function. So the first derivative is going to tell us that when the derivative is positive, the function is increasing. When the derivative is negative, the function is decreasing. So if we're looking at this graph, we might want to look at where the derivative is positive and where the derivative is negative if we're trying to figure out where the function is increasing and the function is decreasing. So if we look over here, if I just pick a random point, my tangent line is going to have a positive slope. Over here, another positive slope, another positive slope, until I get to this point, until I get to x equals 1. So my original function f of x is increasing on the interval from negative infinity up to negative 1. But then as soon as I cross over negative 1, now if I draw my tangent lines, my tangent lines have negative slopes. All the way until I get to this point, x equals 2. So I would say that my f of x is decreasing on the interval from negative 1 to positive 2. And then when I cross positive 2, once again when I draw my tangent lines, my tangent lines have positive slopes, and so I would say that my f of x is increasing again on the interval from 2 to infinity. So it's pretty easy to see where your function is increasing and decreasing when you have a graph. But what if we don't have a graph? What if we only have a formula? Well, it's not practical to just compute the slope at every possible value of x and say that when the slope is positive, you have a, an increasing function, and when your slope is negative, you have a decreasing function. So instead, we're going to rely on this principle. If you think about it, the sine of f prime of x, whether or not f prime is positive or negative, that can only change when the derivative is equal to 0 or when the derivative is undefined, because it has to get from a positive slope to a negative slope somehow. So either that function changes gradually from a positive slope, and then that tangent line levels out, and then I get a zero tangent line, a zero slope, and then my slope becomes negative, so it crosses over zero, or the function is just doesn't have a derivative suddenly, and then switches the derivative switches sign. So we're talking about a graph that maybe looks like this, where at this point, again, my slope is gradually changing from positive slope, positive slope, positive slope, zero slope, negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. So that would be an example of where my slope was zero, and that's where my slope uh, changed, where my sign of my slope changed. Or I could have a graph that maybe looks something like that, where I've got a corner, and so again here I've got negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, and then suddenly I don't have any slope at this point, and then suddenly my slope changes to positive. But that's it. That's the only way that my derivative can change sign, is if it crosses over zero, or it just suddenly changes. So that means that if we're trying to figure out where my function is increasing and decreasing, I'm going to look for those changeover points. And those changeover points, conveniently, from what we talked about in the previous section, those are critical points. So in other words, I need to take my derivative and figure out when is my derivative zero and when is it undefined. So if I take my derivative here, derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared, derivative of 3x squared is 6x, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So this is a polynomial, so it's never undefined, so I'm not going to have any of those kind of critical points. But if I set it equal to 0, 6x squared plus 6x equals 0, I can factor that. I'll factor out a 6x. That leaves me with an x plus 1. So either 6x equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. And that means either x equals 0 
or x equals negative 1. So the way that I want to think about this is I want to draw a number line. On my number line, I'm going to put those two critical values that I found, 0 and negative 1. And what that principle that we just talked about is going to tell me is that on this interval, from negative infinity to negative 1, f prime can't change sign in there. It might change sign at negative 1, but then between negative 1 and 0, it can't change sign inside that interval. It might change sign again at x equals 0, but then again in this interval over here, it can't change sign ever again. The only places where the sign, positive or negative, of the derivative can possibly change are at those two points, those two critical points. So that means that I can pick any number I want, any number less than negative 1, and plug it into my derivative, and that'll tell me whether the derivative is positive or negative there. So for example, I could plug in negative 2. So f prime of negative 2, again, I'm plugging into f prime here to see if it's positive or negative. That's going to give me 6 times negative 2 squared plus 6 times negative 2. That's 24 minus 12. That works out to be 12. Positive 12. The only thing I really care about that 12 is that it's positive. Because what that's telling me now is that for this entire interval, from negative infinity up to negative 1, my function has a positive derivative. And in other words, my function f is increasing. Now at negative 1, my f prime is equal to 0. So I'm sort of characterizing what's going on with f prime here. What about between negative 1 and 0? Well, again, I'm going to pick a number. So in this case, I might pick negative 0.5. That's between negative 1 and 0. Plug that into f prime. So I get 6 times negative 0.5 squared plus 6 times negative 0.5. That's going to be 1.5 minus 3. That's going to be negative 1.5. And again, all I really care about that number is that it's negative, because what that's telling me is that in between negative 1 and 0, f prime stays negative the whole way through. Now at x equals 0, my derivative is 0. Again, that's how I found x equals 0 in the first place. That's how I found x equals negative 1. So that's how I know that f prime is actually equal to 0 at those points. What we're trying to figure out right now is what happens in between those points. So again, I'm going to pick a number that's bigger than 0. So how about positive 2? So I get 6 times positive 2 squared plus 6 times positive 2. That's going to be 24 plus 12, which is 36. And again, all I really care about there is that that's positive 36. And that tells me that my derivative f prime is positive all the way from 0 to infinity. So my conclusion here is that f is increasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative 1 and the interval from 0 to infinity. And when we have multiple intervals like this, we join them with this little U shape, which is called the union symbol. So that's just a way of joining intervals together into one big set. And then f is decreasing. That happens where the derivative f prime is negative, and that was from negative 1 to 0. That's where we got the negative signs on our number line. So that's how that goes. Let's do another one. So this time we've got the function g of x equals x ln x minus x. And again, same question. Where is this function increasing or decreasing? Well, we're going to answer it in the same way. We're going to look for where g prime of x is positive or negative. So for x ln x, we're going to use the product rule because that's x times the ln of x. The derivative of x is 1 times the second function plus x times the derivative of the second function, which is 1 over x, and then minus the derivative of x is 1. So now, where is that going to be undefined? Well, we've got ln of x, that's plus 1 minus 1, so that's just natural log of x. So the natural log of x, that's undefined when x equals 0. But x equals 0 is not even in the domain so 0 is not in the domain of my original function. I can't plug x equals 0 into my original function at all. So that doesn't count as a critical point. Remember, we talked about that. This is also undefined when x is negative. We can't take the log of a negative number. But numbers that are less than 0 are also not in the domain. So when we draw our number line, 0 is sort of the end point of where our domain is. Our domain starts at x equals 0. So one of the ways that we could draw a number line is rather than drawing it all the way from 0, is we'll just start it at 0, and we'll go up from there. Because my function is only defined for values of x that are greater than 0. 
and I'll indicate that that point is a place where my function is undefined by putting a little star above my x-axis when I'm analyzing what my f prime is doing. Okay, so now we're looking for critical points, right? We've talked about where this derivative is undefined. Now we're looking for where it's equal to zero. So where does natural log of x equal zero? Well, if we rewrite that in exponential form, what that means is that e to the zero equals x, or in other words, x equals one. So one, positive one is a critical point. So just like we did before, we're gonna pick a number in here, we're gonna pick a number in here. So I'm gonna pick one half. So I'm taking the number one half and plugging it into my derivative. So that's gonna be the natural log of 0.5, which is gonna be approximately negative 0.693. So again, what I care about is that that's negative. I know my derivative is zero at x equals one. That's how I found x equals one in the first place was by setting my derivative equal to zero. And over here, maybe I'll plug in positive two. That's a number that's bigger than one. That's natural log of two. And so my slope here is approximately positive 0.693. And again, what I care about there is that it's a positive number, which means my derivative has flipped over and become positive there. So my conclusion is that my original function f is increasing that's where I got the pluses, so that's going to be from 1 to infinity. So that's this part of my number line, from 1 up to infinity, not including 1. And then f is decreasing. That was on the interval from 0 to 1. And I don't have to worry about any numbers that are equal to 0 or less than 0 because none of those numbers are in the domain of my function. I can't plug any of those numbers even into my g function. I guess I should call these g's because that's what the actual function is called. So g prime of there, g is decreasing, and so on. So because my function g is not defined for values of x that are negative, we don't have to worry about those uh, being places where my function is increasing or decreasing but my, because my function doesn't even exist there. Okay, so here's the outline. So when you're looking for a function and trying to figure out where it's increasing and decreasing, you're gonna use the derivative to find the critical points for the function f. We've done that before. That was something we talked about in the previous section. Then you're gonna draw a number line and plot all of those critical points together with any of the other points where your function is undefined. We talked about that in the previous example. And now on each interval, so those numbers are gonna chop your number line into intervals. You're gonna choose a number in each interval plug that number into your derivative and see if the result is positive or negative. We're going to indicate that with little plus and minus signs, and then those plus and minus signs are going to tell us the intervals on which my function is increasing and decreasing.